and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you news about the library and our community. I'm Roberta Koschelski, sitting in for your usual host, Tricia Nowak. Today we have with us Mary Ortiz of Lincoln Branch, mm -hmm. longtime Peoria Public Library children's librarian, reference assistant, a person who provides programs wherever she is for children. <laughs> and Mary, you were at the McClure branch for many, many years. Yes, I was. Known yeah. as Miss Mary. Right. To, uh, to the community. Right. And then uh, to McClure neighborhood's dismay, mm -hmm. but to uh, Lincoln neighborhood's delight, <laughs> yes. you are at the, uh, the newly remodeled and expanded Lincoln branch. Yes, and I love it there very much. I have a lot of groups that come in, and the children are, are just wonderful. It's great. Great. Um, you're here today to talk about puppets. Yes, I am. And how did you get involved with puppets? Well, many, many years ago, I took a trip to New York City and went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And at that time, they had a display of puppets. And I'd never, I'd seen them, but I never really was interested in them. And they had a display of Punch and Judy, and I became very interested in it. And they had a puppet show of Punch and Judy that they did at the time. And when I came back, um, still interested in puppets, had a little puppet of my own. And then when I got started with the McClure branch, um, found their puppets and thought, you know what, I can start doing some puppet shows. So I did. So you've been doing them for a long time. Yes, I have. Yes, I okay. have. So. so you know a little about the history mm -hmm. of puppets? What can you tell us? I do. Actually, um, puppetry is over 3,000 years old. Um, the original puppets originated in Egypt, and they were made of clay and stone. Um, some of those have actually been found in ancient Egyptian tombs. In ancient Greece, um, Aristotle and Plato actually referenced puppetry in some of their writings. So, and my favorite puppets, Punch and Judy, which are the famous comedic puppets uh, from Britain, um, they evolved out of a tradition called Commedia dell'arte. Yes, and there they are. Um, Commedia dell'arte, most loosely translated, means comedy of craft. Mm -hmm. It's um, an exaggerated, um, high energy, uh, physical type of comedy improvisation. And Punch and Judy is a traditional, popular puppet show. Um, it features Mr. Punch and his wife, Judy. And the performances consist of a series of sequences where the two interact with each other. Most typically, the violent Punch and Judy. Um, in this picture, they have her holding a pencil. But in the traditional um, performances, she's actually carrying a club. Oh. And they have some little violent interactions <laughs> with each other. But today, um, puppets are used in many instances besides just um, for entertainment. They are used to appeal to children and families, whether on live performances or television. And those are a couple of the rod puppets. Yes. And um, they are actually an an excellent vehicle for presenting moral messages about childhood um, concepts such as bullying. Mm -hmm. They're actually used in uh, play therapy as a safe way for children who have been through traumatic in, um, situations to explore their fears. So puppets are used in a lot of different ways um, like besides just for entertainment. Well, it can be scary to talk to a person. Yes, it can. So they're used by um, medical professions and they're used by um, psychologists as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, there, today there are many regional puppet guilds um, throughout the United States, Europe, and all parts of the world. The regional puppet guilds um, are open to anyone who's interested in puppets. There's one in St. Louis called the Greater St. Louis Puppetry Regional Guild. It was founded in 1939, and like I said, it's open to anyone who's interested in puppets, whether it be marionettes, um, hand or glove puppets, shadow puppets, um, rod puppets, any kind of puppets. And these are the rod puppets. A lot of the children use the rod puppets because they're a very simple way to maneuver them. Because they've got the crossed. Is right. That, is that our next slide, in fact? Well, actually, no? we'll okay. save that one for later. But yeah, these are the simple... Um, this has a cross. A cross on so it, okay. so it's simpler to use um, for beginning puppeteers. You have a string that's connected to one foot, the other foot, the head, and then the tail. So 
so it kind of makes it so it's easier to operate. Um, there are several national um, and international museums as well um, well, that celebrate the history of puppetry. You, you mentioned like the St. Louis mm -hmm. Guild. Now, right. is that a group of people? Is it a building? It's a is guild. It? It's an organization. You can actually go onto the web for, and put in the Greater um, St. Louis Guild, mm -hmm. and um, they'll come up with a website and they show you how to become a member of that. Mm -hmm. So and then they provide? They provide um, opportunities for you to go to workshops, um, puppet plays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Now on to the national. Oh, okay. Scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple of uh, museums that I'd like to mention. The first one is the Puppetry Arts Center in Palm Beach, Florida. And they are not only a museum, but they're a theater. And they have educational workshops as well. They focus their programming on um, puppet performances, puppet education, and puppet exhibitions. And then there's another famous one that's in Atlanta, Georgia, which is called the Center for Puppetry Arts. It opened its doors on September 23rd, 1978, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But Kermit the Frog and his creator, Jim Henson, were actually there to cut the ceremonial ribbon. So it's a very unique, beautiful museum. Um, they offer, offer puppet performances. They have a lot of hands-on workshops as well. They have guided museum tours. And they also offer um, opportunities for teachers to incorporate the puppetry arts into their curriculums. Mm -hmm. So they can use it for teaching children different concepts. Um, they also are the largest not-for-profit organization solely dedicated to the art of puppetry theater. Now, have you so been to either of those I museums? have not been to either one of them. It's on my bucket list uh -huh. <laughs> to go to the one in Atlanta for sure. Yeah. Yes. So. They sound fabulous. Yes, they are. They are. Now, um, if I could, I'd like to talk a little bit about the different kinds of puppets, like you've seen here, the, the rod, rod puppets. And what, what do you call Punch and Judy? What, Punch what, and Judy are called hand and glove puppets because the operator puts his hand into the, the glove puppet. Um, this is actually um, a glove puppet, but it's also called a full body puppet. Um, this is what a lot of the Sesame Street puppets are like. Um, the hand and glove puppet is called a hand and glove because the operator can actually put their hand into the puppet and then maneuver the mouth. Um, this one is the full body. Um, some of them actually come with the body part with the little legs that you can actually set on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you, they use the hands to, manip you know, to do different things with it, gesture and do different things. Mm -hmm. This actually, this puppet actually has a place for two rods. Um, I'm not that talented. I was so. wondering how you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can actually, like I said, with the Sesame Streets, they're actually the full body puppets, and they will have a rod in each one of them to move them around. So um, the one that we have on the screen is called the, the marionette or the rod puppet. And this is a very simple version of one of those as well. Um, it's just a couple little uh, little rods that are put together and you can actually maneuver the arms and I'm not great talent at this, but you can move the arms around as well. There was a lady that was at the um, Peoria Showcase that was in February mm -hmm. that the library hosted. And there was a lady there that um, actually does puppets with these. She has a large storybook that she opens up. It's like a pop-up storybook and it has the scenery. And so then she can maneuver the little puppets around the scenery and does the dialogue for them as well. So that's kind of the, the marionette. Um, there's another picture that we have of the complicated marionette control. Um, yes, and there it is. Um, that is the is one that I have not been able to um, accomplish yet. But it is a, a very sophisticated system. It, you can see the little pictures there where it moves. They have one that does the elbows, one that does the back, the mouth, the head, the arms, um, the knees. They, when you can operate, it's actually a two-part uh, apparatus. They have one hand will, will have the T-like control in it, and then the other hand does the other one to maneuver the other part. So once they get it moving, it's very fluid and looks like somebody just walking. Have you used so, one of those? No, I have not been able to master that at all. But so do I've you tried. Have one? You've, you've I've tried. tried. One. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up with a, some nuts, but 
I don't know if but, our audience can see that, right, but right. There's, uh, there's a lot of parts to it. Yes, left and right shoulders, right head, left head. I mean, it moves the mouth. And like I said, once you get it um, uh, accomplished, it's just it looks like they're just moving and walking. It's, you forget that there are strings. It just looks like a... And so I, you're saying marionette and you're saying puppet. Are marionettes the ones that have strings? Marionettes are the ones that are suspended from strings, okay. right? And then they're manipulated with this control. Um, like the rod ones, the simple ones, and then this is the more complicated one as well. Um, I talked a little bit about the hand and glove puppets and the full, full body puppets. Um, there are a couple of other little um, hand puppets that you can use. This one they call a monkey mitt. Um, it's actually uh, pieces of Velcro that are on this glove that are um, on the ends of it and then you can stick the little piece, has a little piece of Velcro on the back of it and you can stick that onto that. These are mostly used by preschools, um, daycare facilities to choose to teach concepts, basic concepts like counting mm -hmm. or alphabet. Um, this one actually happens to be on the vowels. You have your A, your E for elephant, I Indian, O Octopus, and U Umbrella. I was trying to figure out what uh, what kind of story you would tell with those characters. But right. You'd tell the story of right. vowels. Right, with the vowels, teaching the vowels, yes. Um, they use them for teaching songs, so they, for basically a lot of concepts they use. Um, another type of little puppet is the finger puppets. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the story of Little Red Riding Hood, and they have the little um, puppets here that you put on the ends of your fingers. These are used to enhance the story. Um, they're, it's fun to use these. It brings the story to life for the kids. Um, there's a couple of other unusual type of puppets, and I don't have pictures of them, but you'll have to use your imagination. Um, they're called Bunraka puppets. Mm -hmm. um, they come from Jap Japan. They are very intricate, wooden, um, almost life-size puppets. It takes two people to operate one, and they are illuminated by focused lighting. Um, they have like a spotlight that is almost on them, and the puppeteers are seen. Oh. Um, the puppeteers um, actually dress in all black from head to foot, and then there's one on one side and one on the other side of the wooden figure that act out the story. Um, the story is chanted or narrated. It, the puppets themselves do not talk, but they act out the story. Um, another interesting type of puppetry theater is called shadow puppetry theater. And I have not tried this yet, but that's where you have your traditional puppet theater. The opening that is normally open for the puppets to come out is covered by a screen or a piece of cloth. Mm -hmm. um, more traditionally, they use cotton, silk, you can use rear projection screen as well. That's um, kind of opaque, a little dark. The best way and the cheapest way to do it is to get a vinyl shower curtain, courtesy of Walmart, uh -huh. and attach that to the inside of the screen. And then um, the shadow puppets are lit by a backlight mm -hmm. that produces a shadow that's viewed by the audience on the other side of the screen. And um, they're a little complicated to move. Traditionally, they have to always move forward. Um, when you want one to move backwards, you can't just kind of put it up in the air and move it back. They have what is called a fade out, where you kind of pull it back and fade it away from the screen so mm -hmm. it disappears. And then you maneuver yourself around the other puppeteers to where it's going to enter again. So, But those are just some interesting kind of different types of puppets. Now you mentioned the Banraka. Banraka. Were, were, uh, the Japanese yes. two people dressed right. in black. Um, since we don't have a photo, if people want more information, how do you spell Bunraka? It's B-U-N-R-A-K-U. Okay. B-U-N-R-A-K-U. Okay. okay. If anyone wants to look it up. Right. And they can, if they go on to the internet, they can see some actual um, scenes where they've done the plays. I actually saw that at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That was another puppetry event that was happening. And it is very, they had the Japanese music going and the narrators telling the story and the puppets move in such a way that you'd think they're just people up there moving it. It's very, very fascinating. So, um, a couple of different stages I'd like to talk about, okay. the, the puppet stage. Um, there's one out there that is made with PVC pipe which is very large. It's probably about six to eight feet, um, about six feet tall. It's a very large um, 
apparatus. It takes some time to put together if you're going to go somewhere, if you're going to use this type of puppet work or theater. You have to put all the parts together and then it has a black covering that comes over it to cover all the B PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. It's very neat. Um, you can almost stand behind it to do the puppets. Um, but it is very time consuming to put together and tends to be kind of expensive. And so, so we don't have one of those no, at the library. No, we don't have one of those at the library. Um, the, the puppet stage that I use, that they'll see later on in the show, mm -hmm. um, is a wooden puppet stage that um, was actually built by um, one of the children's librarian's father. Cool. And so um, I saw that she had it and scooped it up and said, I can use that. <laughs> so um, I, that's the puppet theater that I use. It's a wooden stage with a little curtains in front of it, and it has a dark um, kind of translucent um, screen that goes in front of it that the puppeteer is behind. So with the front lighting that you have, the puppeteer is not seen, but the puppeteer can see the puppets that are lit in front to make sure that somebody's head hasn't fallen off or they drop <laughs> something they're supposed to be carrying. So, uh -huh. But that's the traditional one that I use, just the wooden one. People at home can make their own. If you don't have the, the funds to get a puppet theater, you can actually use a cardboard box, a TV box, or a microwave box, put a couple of them together, cut a hole in it, put a little curtain over in front of it, and you've got your own puppet theater. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually use the back of the sofa for a puppet theater at home as well, so to use your imaginations. So I see from the puppet theater you brought in today, it's very portable. It is very portable. It is. I can carry that around. Um, I take it to a lot of the daycares and the facilities that I go to to put on puppet shows. So, okay. yeah. And so if someone watching this mm -hmm. is interested in a puppet show at their facility, mm -hmm. how do they contact you? They contact me at the Lincoln Branch Library. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have uh, the flyers or the kid events that are at the different library locations that list all of my puppet shows that I do. This is the March one that lists uh, the puppet show that I'll be doing in March, the Leprechaun one. So, um, but they can get on any contact uh, the Lincoln Branch Library and I can tell them about our puppet shows. And that's 497-2600. Ask for Miss Mary. Yes, very good. Okay. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about with puppets is the uh, kind of resources that you can use. Um, I discovered early on when I was doing my puppet shows um, some of the puppet shows that I did required two people to do the puppet show. Um, with scheduling and people's work schedules, it was kind of hard to get people together to rehearse and do a puppet show together. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the librarians that used to work for um, Alliance, her name was Denise Anton Wright, wrote a one-person puppet show book, and I got a hold of that, and I have been going ever since. Um, they do traditional puppet shows. She'll do some folk tales. Um, they also have a lot of holiday puppet shows in there. And it's wonderful. It's Maximum would be like five puppets, which is a little challenging sometimes, but one person can do it and pull it off. Um, I do have kids who will ask me, how do you do all those voices? <laughs> <laughs> And it is challenging to keep some of them separate yes. because there's so many, sometimes when you have up to five puppets, it gets a little challenging. But um, there are other one-person puppet show resources. I know there are a lot of small librarians out there that have one-person children's librarians that would like to do puppet shows. Um, there's another one that was written by one of our former librarians, um, Yvonne Fry, yes. who put one out about traditional um, classic fairy tales. And I haven't had a chance to use that one yet, but I'm anxious to, to get a hold of one and, and do one. But um, those are some resources. You can go online. Um, if, it, if they go through Amazon.com, mm -hmm. they can find um, a whole list of puppet scripts. There are a lot that are used for um, different churches for teaching moral classes, moral lessons. Um, but there are also some that are out there for the, just the regular traditional puppet shows as well. And did you do a puppet workshop? I am going to be doing a work okay. of puppet workshop on April 26th at the Lincoln Branch. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history, and then I have several scripts that we're going to take the class, depending on how big I have, mm -hmm. and we're going to actually give them the opportunity to put together a little um, reader's theater production. Reader's theater is easy to do because you don't have to memorize right. anything. 
and they can sit in a chair. They don't have to, you don't have to block it. You don't have to do any movement. They're just sitting in a chair and conversing with each other. So it's a fun way for people to do. Um, a lot of teachers, um, I'm hoping I get a lot of teachers that come to the workshop because it's excellent tool to use when teaching reading for children. It makes it a fun opportunity for them to learn how to read and develop their vocabulary skills without knowing they're doing it because right. they're having fun. And the attention's on the puppet. Right, exactly. So, and so if people are interested in that, it, that's for adults. That's for adults and right. um, teachers and any kind of educators. Okay. And they can contact the Lincoln branch at 497-2600. Ask for Miss Mary and I'll be happy to tell them about that. Okay, terrific. So, yeah. You have crammed a lot of information in a short amount of time, and we're, we're stopping. The okay. show's not over, but we're stopping right now okay. because I think we're going to take a break, and you'll do a short puppet show for I us. I am. I'm excited to do that for you. So um, okay. I'm closing with our typical closing. Okay. But stay tuned okay. for Miss Mary and her puppet show. So thank you for watching Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air. Um, please join us next week and we'll see you at the library and enjoy the puppet show. Hi everybody! Today the librarian asked me to talk to all of you about how to take care of library books. I really don't know why she asked me. I guess it's because I've been using the library for a long time. As a matter of fact, I've been using the library ever since I was a teeny little piglet. Oh, oh pig, 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 pig! Excuse me, I don't want to disturb you while you're talking to the kids, but could I borrow a piece of paper? Um, sure, Dragon. Um, excuse me while I go get a piece of paper for Dragon. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see, piece of paper. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry about that interruption. Let's see, what were we talking about? Oh, I know. I was saying, I learned a long time ago how important it is to take good of library books. Why, as a matter of fact, I remember one time when I was reading this really great book. It was so good I couldn't put it down. I just had to find out what happened. Well, <laughs> I made the mistake of reading that book while I was taking a bath, and I accidentally dropped it in the mud. Boy, was that an expensive book. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 pick, pick, pick. Hey, I hate to bother you again, but could I borrow a, a crayon? Um, sure. Uh, dragon, I'll be right back, guys. So hold on, I gotta get a crayon for Dragon. Hold on. Let's see, crayon, crayon, crayon. Oh, 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 crayon, crayon. Oh, 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 oh. oh, thank you. I'll be right back. Take care. Bye. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, now uh, let's see, what was I saying? Oh, I remember, I was telling you about how to take care of library books. Well, I learned a long time ago how important it is to take care of library books. You see, one time while I was eating at the trough, I was reading, and you can imagine how messy we pigs tend to be when we eat. My library book had food stuck all over it, and it was disgusting. I felt so bad because that book was ruined and nobody else could read it, and I also had to pay for a new copy of that book, and it was pretty expensive. Why, I had to save my allowance for days, and oh, 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 pig, pig, pig. Hey, 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 to bother you, but do you have um, um, any cray or colored marker, or excuse me, watercolors that I could use? Well, okay, I'll go get them. Uh, don't you see I'm busy talking to the kids? I know, but sorry to disturb you, but the picture I'm drawing really needs some watercolors. Okay, I'll go get them. Uh, sorry about this. Okay, watercolors. Oh, where are the watercolors? Oh, thank you. This will be perfect. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry that Dragon keeps interrupting us that way. You know, Dragon can be really thoughtless sometimes. Well, let me get back to what I was talking about. Mm, I remember one time my little brother grabbed one of my library books and started drawing all over it. Gosh, was I ever mad at him. But at least that taught me to always put my library books in a special place where my little brother can't get them. 
And of course, I learned to never eat while reading or take a bath while reading. And it sure saved me a lot of money. Oh, 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 big, big, I hate to bother you again, but I've got something to show you. Dragon, how many times do I have to tell you to stop bothering me? First you borrow all my stuff, now you want me to show you something? Dragon, please leave me out, whoa! Well, well, I'm really sorry, Pig, uh, to keep bothering you, but the picture I drew was of you, and I want you to see it. Of me? Yeah, I'll go get it, and then you can see it, okay? You're, after all, you are my best friend. I'll go get it right now. Hold on. Oh, gosh. I feel like a real swine. All the time I was getting mad at Dragon, and he was drawing a picture of me. Oh. Oh, oh, here, here. I almost got it. Here, where we go? Oh, here it is. Oh, upside down. Oh, can't do that. Oh, 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 here it is. What do you think? It's the most beautiful picture I've ever seen, Dragon. I'm sorry that I got mad at you just now. Oh, that's okay, Pig. I understand. You're still my best friend. Well, I guess that's all I have to say about taking care of library books. I hope you all learned something. I know I sure did. I learned I have a very good friend in Dragon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Shh.